Hello, everyone, and welcome to week four of USMLE Domination, fourth high yield tutorial. This is a really awesome tutorial. I'm excited about this. But before we begin, please subscribe to the channel. Let this information and free knowledge go viral. We want everyone around the world to benefit and ace the USMLE examination. So without further ado, let's talk about uh, pneumonia, which is a very common high yield topic on the USMLE. I guarantee all of you will get at least a couple questions on pneumonia. So I want to demystify the concept of pneumonia on this tutorial. So there are different types of pneumonia you can have. You can have bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, fungal and TB pneumonia, and what I've grouped as PCP pneumonia. These are the most common types of pneumonia that they are going to show you on the USMLE. Now, in terms of bacterial pneumonia, what you're going to see is you're going to see areas of low bar consolidation or opacity. So you, on this frontal and lateral radiograph of, of the chest, you see this area of focal opacity within the right lower lobe. And on the lateral view, you can see it posteriorly, you know, silhouetting or overlying the thoracic spine here. So notice that this pneumonia is confined to a specific lobe in the lung. That's a very characteristic feature of bacterial pneumonia. And in this case, it's confined to the right lower lobe. It's not the right middle lobe because we can see the right heart border very well. If, if the opacity was obscuring this right, the, the right heart border, that would be within the right middle lobe. And in this case, it's within the right lower lobe. Again, very characteristic finding of bacterial pneumonia. Typically, these patients will present with fever, cough, maybe pleuritic chest pain, and productive sputum. That's another key finding in bacterial pneumonia, fever and a productive sputum. Now, in contrast, this is viral pneumonia. Notice that this person has an endotracheal tube here, but in viral pneumonia, you get interstitial opacities and multifocal airspace opacity. So you can see these linear areas of opacity. This is inflammation coursing along the you know, alveolar walls of the interstitium. And then you get this focal opacity there, focal opacity here along the periphery of the lung in the, in the, in the, around the base, opacity there, opacity there. So you have these multifocal airspace opacities with interstitial opacities as well. That's a very nice example of what viral pneumonia would look like. You know, something like adenovirus, RSV, uh, influenza, this is what those type of pneumonias would look like. And these have more of an indolent course. So there may be a low grade fever, they may have a cough. Usually the sputum is not non-productive, so you won't get productive sputum as we do in, in bacterial pneumonia. But again, this is sort of an indolent course with more of a low grade fever and sputum that's non-productive. And you know the, the lung is made up of, the fundamental component of the lung is made up of a secondary pulmonary lobule, which is you're seeing here in this cartoon. Centrally, you have a centrilobular bronchial and artery and the uh, interlobular, the septum here contains the pulmonary vein. And this is where the alveolar walls and the, um, the inflammation in viral pneumonia courses across to involve multiple lobes of the lung. And here you can see a CT examination where you have this, you know, this dense linear line is the interlobular septum, okay? We normally don't see that on a CT, but when it gets inflamed, we can see interlobular septal thickening. Now, atypical pneumonia can look a lot like viral pneumonia. So things like Legionella pneumonia, uh, Chlamydia pneumonia, uh, these type of mycoplasma pneumonia. This can also appear on the US In fact, I got a question on Legionella pneumonia, which is why I'm showing it here. We have a tracheostomy tube here, uh, left side of central venous catheter and an enteric catheter. But the findings I wanna show you are areas of interstitial, you know, linear lines, which we see here essentially. And then we have, you know, multifocal opacities here along the periphery of the right lung and even a little bit to a, to, to a lesser degree on the left lung. So the fact that we have multifocal opacities involving multiple lobes, um, interstitial thickening, interstitial opacities, these linear opacities centrally, that's all typical for either viral pneumonia or atypical pneumonia. The thing with Legionella pneumonia is that this can be rapidly progressive. You know, you have asymmetric consolidation, as we see in this case, right greater than left. And sometimes you can have pleural effusions and you can notice that the cost of fretting angle here is a little blunted. So you see, you don't see the sharp margin of the cost of fretting angle here between the uh, diaphragm and the lung and you don't see it here as well. So the fact that you have blunting of these cost of fretting angles that indicates small pleural effusions and pleural effusions are very common in Legionella pneumonia as well. Remember that this type of pneumonia is, um, a risk factor is being around aquatic environments, right? You inhale this through, um, um, through water droplets, right? And the clinical vignette may have evidence of bradycardia and diarrhea. That's, those are also two very important clinical findings that we often see in Legionella pneumonia. So in your clinical vignette, you may, in the vital signs, you may notice that the patient is bradycardic or has a low 
pulse less than 60, and they may have diarrhea. Okay, so um, Legionella pneumonia, a nice example of what that looks like on chest x-ray. Now, fungal pneumonia TB can look very similar. If you remember from my last video last week, it's often a characteristic finding is a cavity. And here we see a cavity here in the left lung, okay? Fungal pneumonia can also present with cavities. So TB, fungal pneumonia, and actually even squamous cell carcinoma, cancer in the lung can result in a cavity or cavitary lesion where there's this lucency with peripheral rim of hyperdensity, okay? So um, we talked about that last week, but fungal pneumonia and TB, a characteristic finding of both of these are um, uh, a cavitary lesion. This is a CT examination showing a cavitary lesion. Patients here can present also with, you know, a fever. Typically, these patients will be immunocompromised, okay? So that's another important uh, key risk factor for, you know, patients on steroids or immunocompromised state, um, having a, a transplant. Those are the patients that are likely to, to present with fungal or TB pneumonia. And finally, PCP pneumonia, which is often seen in HIV patients, patients with AIDS or CD4 counts of less than 200, you typically get widespread diffuse multifocal opacity. So notice here we have, you know, widespread opacities, you know, focal widespread opacities involving nearly every lobe of the lung in this case of PCP pneumonia. Um, it's also described as ground glass opacities. Uh, this is what a typical chest x-ray would look like for someone that had PCP pneumonia, okay? So in summary, I want to summarize these for USMLE must know points. So in bacterial pneumonia, think about a fever, cough, and a productive sputum. That's the key, a productive sputum. And typically, it'll have low bar consolidation, consolidation confined to one lobe of the lung. Now, you can also have bronchopneumonia that's bacterial that involves multiple lobes of the lungs. But a characteristic finding really is for the consolidation to involve one lobe of the lung. And that's what they're likely to show you on the USMLE. Viral pneumonia or um, um, atypical pneumonia is typically as an indolent course, typically known as like walking pneumonia. You may have upper respiratory symptoms like, you know, a runny nose, a sore throat. The sputum is going to be non-productive and you're looking for interstitial opacities, patchy multifocal opacities. Viral pneumonia almost never involves just one lobe of the lung. That's a key feature that can help differentiate viral and bacterial. And often, if you can read the chest x-ray very well, you may not even have to pay attention to all the vignettes in the clinical, uh, clinical vignette that they present to you, okay? Fungal and TB pneumonia, typically immunocompromised patients, right? Steroid therapy, um, transplant patient. Look at end endemic areas. So for example, cryptococcus, you're gonna look at South, Southern California, uh, coccidiomycosis, Southern, Southwest United States. Look for those clues in the vignette. And typically that cavitary lesion is gonna be very characteristic for fungal or TB pneumonia, okay? And then PCP pneumonia, or now better known as pneumocystis, Jerovisi, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but typically an HIV positive patient with CD4 count less than 200, fever, cough, non-productive, sputum, diffuse bilateral widespread opacities. Okay, that's what you're looking for on, on the chest x-ray. Now, if they ask you on the USMLE, and I got this question on my USMLE, US a patient with you know, HIV count for less than, less than 200 CD, CD4 count, what's the most likely causative organism for the pneumonia? The answer is strep pneumonia, not PCP, right? So because strep pneumonia is just way more common than PCP pneumonia, even in an HIV patient that has a CD4 count of less than 200. However, if they show you, you know, CD4 count less than 200, fever, cough, non-productive sputum with diffuse widespread opacities in the lungs bilaterally, it's likely going to be PCP pneumonia. I hope that was helpful. We're going to do another high yield topic next week. Please subscribe. Please share this content. There's no reason why all of you can't get a 90th percentile on the USMLE. Thank you so much for your attention.